what do you think are some habits of successful powerlifters? And how effective are you at implementing these same habits? Well, in this video, we're gonna break down seven habits of successful powerlifters so you can figure out which ones you have to implement or improve upon so you can get better in the sport of powerlifting. So let's get right into it. Alrighty, welcome my powerlifting people. We're gonna get right into the video, starting off with the first habit that successful powerlifters implement, and that is that they write down their goals. So taking aside what your goals are, whether they're good goals or bad goals, or how far of a reach they are, or how long away the goal is, you want to be writing down your goals. So it doesn't matter if you have some kind of great goal and it's very achievable that you think of one time when you're in the bathroom or maybe you're in the gym one time, and then you completely forget about it and then never actually put the steps in place to achieve that goal. So obviously, the first thing is you actually want to remember this goal on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis and be able to make changes in your life to achieve that goal. And so that's why you want to write down the goal so that you're aware of that goal one day later, one week later, one month later, however you want to write it down. If you want to put it into your phone, if you want to put it into some app you use on your computer, if you want to write it down on a whiteboard in your room, whatever you want to do to where it's going to be in front of you and you can constantly be reminded of it and remember that this is the goal that you want. This is the goal that you set for yourself. And so these are the changes you have to do in order for you to reach that goal versus it just being there in your mind one day and you're forgetting about the next month and then you never actually implement anything to make that goal happen and then you never achieve that goal. So if you want to be successful in the sport of powerlifting and you want to achieve various goals in the sport of powerlifting, then you need to write down your goal. The second habit for successful powerlifters is that they're developing a strong worth ethic. So this doesn't mean that you already have to have a strong worth ethic when you come into the sport right away, but you are willing and able to develop that strong work ethic over time, just like you're willing and able to, you know, put more into the sport, whether it's improving technique, hiring a coach, whatever like that, you may not come in the sport with perfect technique, but you can improve it over time. So you want to be working and developing a strong work ethic over time, and that's going to make you more successful. So what does it actually mean to have a strong work ethic? Or what are some things that we can relate to that? Well, some words you may think of or may hear about even at work that people relate to a strong work ethic could be things like you are reliable, you are professional, you are disciplined, you are determined, you are dedicated and you have character and integrity. These are some of the things that you want to be implementing and developing over time when you're in the sport. So you want to be, for example, reliable when it comes to if your coach gives you a program, you actually want to go and do those training days to make the adaptations you need to make in order to get better at the sport. You also want to be reliable as far as giving your coach feedback and sending them videos and sending them weekly updates or monthly updates, whatever type of coaching you're doing. So your coach then has all the information they need to continue to make your program better and give you technical feedback and those kinds of things. Related to that is other words like, you know, being dependable or being disciplined is that if you want to achieve a goal, it's not just like, okay, I wrote down the goal. Now I'm going to achieve it. You write down the goal and then now you have to backtrack and build, okay, what are the things I need to do along the way to achieve that goal? And then you're going to keep yourself disciplined to doing those things in order to re receive that end result. So some people may set a goal and then things come in the way. Your buddies call you out to go drink or, hey, you want to order pizza in one night. You're too lazy to cook and stuff like that. And those little things chip away at you from achieving those goals. So that discipline or dependability or depending on yourself will help you to stay disciplined and do the things that you need to do. Okay, I'm going to cook the food that I need to do to hit the macros I need to make in order to achieve my goals. I'm going to go to sleep at the times I need to go to sleep in order to maximize recovery to achieve the goal I want to achieve. I'm going to, you know, stay in or whatever or go out with my buddies, but not drink. So I'm not dehydrated in the morning when I have to do my heavy SPD session. So these are all things that you want to assess of yourself and be like, okay, what level am I at when it comes to being disciplined to my program or my nutrition or my sleep, whatever like that, and communicating with my coach on a dependable and reliable basis. And then from there, be like, okay, what improvements can I make? Can I make small adjustments here and there? Can I put different systems in place to make sure I have all the food I need for the week to make sure I hit the macros I need to make myself better, give myself a stronger worth ethic and be able to achieve those goals. The third habit of successful powerlifters is that they read often or that they're learning often. And this can be things directly related to powerlifting or things outside of powerlifting that you can then implement into powerlifting. So you may see a lot of top coaches who are also top athletes or maybe just top athletes that don't coach themselves, but they're constantly trying to learn things about their sport, whether it's learning about programming, whether it's learning about technique, whether it's learning about processes to qualify for nationals 
or things about the rule book changes or how to qualify for worlds or anything like that. They are involved in their sport and reading and learning about their sport so they can then use that stuff for their advantage when they are implementing the things for themselves or when they're just communicating with their coach. They can better understand why their coach is making some kind of technical change. They can better understand why their coach is doing something when it comes to programming or telling them, hey, this meet isn't as important. We're not gonna cut weight for this meet or we're only gonna go up to openers for this meet. We're gonna save you for this other meet. And then the same thing, like I said, for outside of powerlifting, there's things outside of the world of powerlifting when it comes to business, finance, tech, whatever job you're working, family, religion, and all this kind of stuff. There's different concepts and ideas and stuff like that and things outside of powerlifting where if you understand the concept, then you can apply that same concept into the sport of powerlifting. And again, use that to your advantage as a way for you to get farther in the sport, as a way to communicate better with your coach, as a way to understand referees or meet directors, anything like that better. And then again, the overall idea here is to help you achieve your goals and to be more successful in the sport. There's only so much that you can do and so far and get being completely oblivious and completely relying on someone else, especially if it comes to, for example, online powerlifting coaching versus in person. When online, your coach is not going to be there day to day for your sessions. They're not going to know exactly like what dynamic warm up you're doing or how many sets you're doing for your warm ups, how many reps you're doing, how much time you're taking. Even if you try and communicate all this information to them, one, there's a lot of information you have to provide so they know every single little detail of your workouts, of your nutrition, of your sleep, everything like that. And two, it's going to be very difficult for a coach to intake all that information and then be able to apply it because you're basically looking back. You're looking back at a session you previously did and how you warmed up versus if it was in person, then your coach would be there live to be able to make the adjustments in person. So you can't completely rely on other people to just do everything for you. Like, I don't even know the rules. I don't even know what's going on with the programming. I don't even know how to qualify for this meet. My coach will just tell me everything. You have to have some kind of baseline knowledge and the higher that your baseline knowledge is up to a certain point, there's obviously, you know, diminishing returns, the more beneficial it's going to be for you. The fourth habit of successful power lifters is going to be that they plan their week. They have good time management skills. So you may often see power lifters or even just people in general, you know, say that they don't have enough time to do something. Oh, I would love to do this, but I just don't have time. I'm so busy with other things. Or they may be communicating with their coach like, hey, I didn't have time to do my accessory work or I didn't have time to do this workout or I didn't have time to eat the meal I wanted. So I went and ate out or something like that. So you need to have good time management skills and be able to plan things out in advance to make sure you set yourself up for success. And most of you probably already do this. For example, if you're training four days a week, you may already plan out what days for a particular week or what days on a standard week work best for you. So you may be on a Saturday and Sunday thinking, okay, this week I'm going to train, you know, Monday, Tuesday, then Thursday, Friday, or Hey, no, I can't do my regular schedule. I have to switch it up and have to push things back to the end. So I might do, you say Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday. So you're planning out in advance where to schedule your training days because that is a priority to you getting your sessions in. And so you're saying, okay, I have my work, I have my family, I have this other obligations, but I can still fit these sessions in here, here, and here to be able to get those in. And you want to be thinking about that same thing with all aspects. So as another example, when it comes to nutrition, you may not be able to cook your meals every single day. Okay. You may not have time by the time you come home from work late at night, you have to go to the train and then you have to, you know, shower and spend time with your family. You don't have time then to cook and clean and all that kind of stuff. And so you may have to meal prep. So there are a lot of powerfuls that spend, let's say Sunday, several hours on a Sunday cooking all their lunches and dinners, maybe breakfast. It's something easy for them. They have cereal or protein bar, or protein shake. And so they'll just cook out seven lunches and seven dinners and then store that in their fridge. And so then when it comes time during the week when they are busy and when they're trying to train and do everything else, then they already have these meals prepared for them, ready to go. All they do is take it out of the fridge, maybe heat it up and then you're ready to go. So they plan their week in advance of these are the days I'm going to train. These are the meals I'm going to make. These are the times I'm going to go see my physical therapist, or these are the days I'm going to go get acupuncture, whatever you're doing, whatever things that you have to apply for your sport of powerlifting, you are playing those in advance and managing your time accordingly to make sure you hit all those things. Now, nobody's perfect. Okay. No one's going to hit this 100% of dot all the time throughout the year. There's going to be times where things just come up, emergency situations, or maybe things just come up and you had forgotten about, you never wrote down, you have to go to some kind of venture like that. And so you don't have to be perfect. Again, these are things that you want to be starting off. Okay. What's my base level? How good am I when it comes to getting my training sessions and how good am I when it comes to getting my nutrition and then where can I make improvements? How can I plan my week better and plan in advance to improve on these things? And maybe go from 70% consistency to 80% consistency. And maybe when you've done 80% for a while, okay, I'm going to go from 80% to 85% consistency and slowly improve yourself over time until you get to a level. Okay. Now you basically maximize how efficient you are with your time for your current circumstances. And then that's what you're 
maximizing everything there. So you want to plan your week in advance and have good time management skills. All right, the fifth successful habit is that the top powerlifters are practicing positive self-talk. And now I'm not saying this is the end all be all. If you think every single day for the rest of life, I'm going to be a world champion or I'm going to be an NBA star or I can fly that it's going to happen just because you think of it. But there is some kind of effect there that is shown in the research as well, that if you are being positive to yourself and setting yourself up for success, then you are going to achieve that success. Obviously, again, within reason. And if you're setting yourself up with lots of negative thoughts and be like, oh, I can never achieve this or it's not even worth doing this. Oh, why should I even bother with this? Then you are going to neglect some of these things that we're discussing and then it's going to lead to more negative results. So there's obviously a top end of what you can achieve based on your genetics and when you get started in a sport and how long you train and how long you can avoid injuries, those kind of things. And there's also a bottom, a floor of, okay, if you're a top genetic person and you still slack off, you're probably going to be still pretty strong and stronger than a lot of other people. But there is still that gap and how to work up that gap includes this positive self-talk. So if you're positive to yourself that you can achieve the goals that you set for yourself, that you believe in the program that your coach is writing for you, that you can be disciplined when it comes to your nutrition, your sleep and so on and so forth, then that's going to help you move up the ladder, get to that higher end, get to that ceiling of what your potential is and be more successful in the sport of powerlifting and maybe become one of those top athletes. The sixth habit of successful powerlifters is that they have some kind of mentor. Now, a mentor could be a very broad word. Word. it could be used for different areas and even maybe your coach can also be your mentor but having someone you can go to when you have different questions about things people who have been around longer in the sport or maybe know more about the rules or have been maybe coaching for a long time could be someone who could be a good mentor because they can pass off the mistakes that they've made up to you they can pass off the wisdom and the knowledge have to you it can help you when it comes to some kind of decision of what you want to do or where you want to go so for example let's say you're working with some kind of coach maybe you're new to powerlifting and the coach maybe just does like general strength training but doesn't know too much about the sport and maybe you're trying to get more serious in the sport and looking for a more specific powerlifting coach maybe going to someone a mentor it could be a referee in your state it could be another lifter who's been around longer than you it could be the state chair something like that and asking for them advice like hey i'm thinking about become more serious about this i want to like you know get another coach do you think that's a good idea who do you think are some good options how do you think i should let my old coach know that hey you're great if i want to move on to someone else and then they can give you that knowledge they can give you that wisdom and help direct you in the right direction in order to find that better coach and leave your previous coach on a good note and have still have that good relationship and it can be the same thing like trying to figure out what competitions to do there's different paths that you can take not only in let's say like full power versus bench only but also raw versus equipped there's different federations do you go to nationals do you go to pro series do you go to world championships and so some mentor can help you okay these are the pros and cons of going down this path these are the pros and cons of the going down this path seeing which one is more likely for you to achieve see which one fits your schedule and your budget and all those kind of things and again help you and direct you in the right direction to get to the goals that you want to achieve and have a successful time in the sport of powerlifting and a mentor can even help you with these other habits that i went over so for example if you have trouble with you know positive self-talk and you're freaking out at meets and that's leading to you missing attempts and not matching kind of what you're capable of in the gym then having a mentor can help you with that help you get over your fears and help you stay in a positive state and meet and help you be more successful and make attempts so if you don't already have one then you definitely want to find yourself a mentor. The seventh habit of successful powerlifters, and this kind of goes along with everything else I'm saying, is that they developed proper nutrition and sleep. So when it comes to being a top athlete, you have to be the full package. You can't just be someone who is super jacked and then has terrible technique and doesn't sleep or whatever like that. You can't be a powerlifter who just has, you know, a monster deadlift and your squat and bench are lagging and it carries you through lower level meets, but you don't care about actually improving technique or getting on a better program or again, putting on more muscle mass to improve your squat and bench press to be more competitive all around and move up the ladder and be better in the sport. You have to be the full package. And again, notice how we're not talking about being perfect, not being like, okay, I'm gonna sleep eight hours a day, every single day for the rest of my life, or I'm gonna hit my macros exactly on the nose every single day for the rest of my powerlifting career. You wanna be improving these things slowly over time. So if your nutrition's out of place, your sleep's out of place, your technique's out of place, this and that, okay, maybe you start working on one thing at a time. Maybe you work with a coach and you're first working on the technique stuff, you're first figuring out what meets to do, and you're neglecting the nutrition sleep a little bit but then towards the end you maybe want to start okay what's the next thing I'm going to add in there okay i'm only sleeping four or five hours a night what can i do to improve it to five to six hours a night is there other things i'm doing playing video games or watching tv and i can just stop that an hour earlier and get an hour earlier in, in a sleep are there any time management things that i can do going back to one of the other habits to maybe not be cooking and cleaning and doing all these things late at night preparing in advance at the beginning of the week so that then i can sleep a little bit more each of those other nights that 
I already have my meals and everything cooked. So again, you want to be developing a good plan, figuring out what's a good nutrition plan for you, where good macros to hit. Are you going to be in a caloric surplus? Are you going to be in a caloric deficit? Are you switching between them? When are you going to do it? And then how can you slowly improve the amount of sleep you're having over time? If you are low on sleep, maybe it includes taking naps during the day, or maybe it includes, like I said, the other things of removing other things out of your life to be able to go to sleep earlier. But then you develop a full package. Then you have the programming, the technique, the nutrition, the sleep, the mentor, the plan of what meets to go to, everything like that. And again, that's going to help you move up the ladder and be more successful in the sport of powerlifting. And if you want to learn more about the mindset and the mentality you need for the sport of powerlifting to, again, improve yourself, move up the ladder, become more competitive, be more successful, maybe one day become a top powerlifting athlete yourself, then you want to click right here to go into my powerlifting mindset playlist to watch those videos next. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.